All right, welcome back to The Horror with Mike. And Nate. On this episode, we're going to go into our review of True Detective Season 2, Episode 2. This is also going to include some of my thoughts on Episode 1, which I wasn't able to comment on last week. Yeah, so this will be a, a new weekly feature from the guys at The Horror, but not really having to do with horror. No. Um, uh, again, I give True Detective more, It's I give it a little bit of genre flavor. Maybe a little bit less this particular season, but we'll see what happens. Um, so, this is the other thing, is we're going to be doing this weekly. We're also going to be doing one for Scream. The first episode, which we already have up, you can check that out, um, is spoiler free. However, we figure after two, if you've jumped on board, two and onward of these shows are going to contain spoilers and we're going to get into plot details. Yeah. So, spoiler alert the, for this episode. Yeah, for this episode in particular, I don't know how it's going to play out, but it's not even worth discussing without the spoilers. Exactly. Um, so, spoiler alert, episode two review, and, okay. Uh, real quick, like I say, I want to get into my review of episode one. Um, you talked about episode one last week and I wasn't really able to talk about it. You mentioned that the last, um, kill was kind of not really much to, I said that, yeah, the end, the end of that episode where they find the the body, um, lacked punch. It lacked, uh, that, uh, in the first season when they find the body in episode one, it makes you feel like this is a crime that has to be solved. It's important. Right. And the second season didn't deliver that punch. Right. In the first episode. So, th- so this is the thing, and this is what I, truthfully, I would have said anyway, is that they're playing with the rules already established from part one and expectations. And I would have been correct. It just so happens, again, um, that in episode two, you see just how fucked everything is and it is a disturbing yeah so they tricked you into thinking it was simple i mean they tricked themselves and be like aha we defied your expectations we gave you a first episode that was average right well exactly but i do believe that episode one okay episode one overall yes it was boring it was whatever it was just set up other than colin farrell in the mask and i'm already kind of getting them confused but it was a little, it was it was lackluster, but mm-hmm. whatever. Anyway, so, as we get into episode two, um, so the thing is, is episode two started also showing the writing that I liked from part one. Like, there's a lot of really uh, shining bits of dialogue, like, especially between Colin Farrell and Rachel McAdams. That, that was one of my favorite bits of the episode, because it's... It was some actual interplay between colleagues. Right. It, right. They they took just thirty seconds away from the daddy issues, and it was nice. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And um, just the more darkly poetic stuff started to leak in there with Vince Vaughn's story. Yeah, he was a gamer with that uh, monologue in the beginning. Yeah, and so what I think it was um, is that episode one was literally just we're going to, we have to lay all the groundwork. So it was overly like boring and convoluted and whatever, because it's all lay the groundwork. We only have eight episodes to do this. Now episode two started to get into the interplay between everybody. And now we're going to start rolling really from here with all the like more true detective type stuff. Um, The the mystery itself expanded and got a lot more interesting. Right. Uh, And uh, I liked uh, Frank's connection to it, him being a gangster that's desperate for money. Mm-hmm. And, uh, okay, let me, let me say this. Um, Vince Vaughn, I think is doing a great job with, I do too. with a character that I don't feel is that great yet. Mm-hmm. Maybe, maybe he's going to blossom, but, oh, I'm uh, sure he will. um, the character itself isn't, isn't that great, but I think Vaughn is taking the same approach to his character that Colin Farrell took to his, which is building a character from the ground up and not... It'd be so easy to be flashy and to choose scenery being a gangster. And he tries his best to avoid doing that. Do the exact opposite. Yeah, and uh, I like him. Yeah, he has very few scenes where he goes intimidating. What's cool is you can see the crazy and the seriousness behind his eyes, 
But for the most part, he's really, and his character is really trying to like be a better person. He's right. just he's very controlled, which is what a lead villain would be, now, as opposed to crazy the, shooting. The their flip henchmen. side of that coin is, I think, the uh, highway patrol officer played by Taylor Kitsch. Right. I think that character is very interesting, but the actor is dropping the ball and making me not give a shit about that character at all. You know, I'm actually, I, I'm, I'm impressed with him. Even from the first episode, I was impressed with him. There's just, there's something that I've never seen before in him, and it's, it's not blowing me away by any means, but I don't hate him. I don't, it, it's really good about underplaying all of the good things about Taylor Kitsch. You know, that he's a ladies' man. He always fucks it up. He possibly might be, like, gay. His nice body is, like, fucked up with scars and shit. Like, it seems like they're really trying to go kind of against a lot of things that yeah. I assumed he was going to play the part of we need an attractive male to bring in the women type yeah, thing. He's, he's just not... Uh, so far, he's not working for me. And I... I I think of him. I don't even know his character's name. I just think of him as Officer Battleship. Hmm. Um, Rachel McAdams. She got um, to me a little more interesting this week. Definitely. Um, the scene with her looking at pornography. Mm -hmm. Just the way that scene was shot. Mm -hmm. uh, well, because it's her sister she was looking at. Yeah, uh, yeah. But it was just uh, that scene was no, fantastic. no. That was a very good scene. I think that might. I think I got hooked earlier with um, the two of them talking to each other. Um, specifically, I think what hooked me is she's driving and she pulls uh, Matthew McConaughey, whatever. She looks out and she's like, 70,000 people come to this state every month. Where do they all live? And it was just, and then it's over. Yeah. And it's like, that's the kind of stuff that I really liked where it's just like, it presents these ideas that are just like, what the fuck is wrong with our world? Like, how did, what's the and puzzle? I think to that? we're just scratching the surface with her darkness, mm -hmm, and I'm really mm -hmm, looking forward mm -hmm. to that. So, you know, that, that covers uh, all the major characters, and then we get to Colin Farrell, who I said last week in my review, he was in that first episode, he was the center point for me. He was my favorite thing about it his backstory, his performance. I just, I loved that character. And right. then, so at the end of episode two, they do something that finally got me hooked on the show. For the first time, I was like, all right, now now I'm invested. You surprised me. Right. You you jumped the gun in a way I, I wasn't expecting, and now I'm hooked. At the same time, I'm also pissed because they killed my favorite character. Well, get ready to be pissed off because it's about to flip on you he's not dead he's not fucking dead it's like I, TV shows have pulled this on us forever well if, okay well that, that's the other thing I, I was giving the show credit that it was the show I thought it is if he survives two shotgun blasts to the and chest he will, and it's gonna suck then um, even if he spends the entire rest of the right. season in a hospital in a beep, bed beep, beep, right um no, no bueno. Yep, exactly. So um, the show got a lot of credit, but if it plays out the way you think, then the show is going to lose all of that good faith. Right. So, and so I think it built enough good faith in and of itself, but like, okay, this is the thing. is It, it, it isn't because every show does this kind of thing where it makes you think as a cliffhanger a character dies. See, the thing is, is... Was he? Thank God you were wearing that bulletproof vest, or thank God he used rock salt. You know, mm -hmm. we've seen all of this stuff play out before. I think of Kill Bill Two, where he shoots her with a double barrel. Now, of course, that's more fantasy, but you're like, there's no way she could have survived that. Yeah, but and it's like, oh, thank but God, that, it was but rock that salt. Is wah, fantasy. Wah, 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 wah. And I don't want that element of fantasy in in True Detective. I I mean, I I don't want that. So I'm gonna that's going to suck. But I do think that the show is is going somewhere just yeah don't get too excited that they killed colin farrell because the other thing too is i do not trust tv shows or movies anything unless you basically destroy that person they can come up with a way to bring them back and so that also makes my point more valid if they were really going for the death of colin farrell they would have made it more pivotal if he really is dead that was a lame death for him because the guy purposely walks up the second time, shoots him again, 
Why didn't he just aim a little higher, shoot, and blow his head up? And then you'd be like, yeah, there's no fucking way. Right. Colin Farrell's not coming back. Because movie bullshit logic says that anyone can have anything happen to him as long as their head stays intact. Yeah. Uh, hopefully they so do just not get go over that. that. Hopefully they do not go that Marvel Comics route, though. Yeah. So just get over that and start uh, finding other reasons to like the show. Because I, I just, I refuse to believe a big. Even if it's not a big actor, because I believed it at first, and then when I thought about it, I was like, no. Um, but see, why I believed it at first, because I thought they were going to pull out with Taylor Kitsch. I was hoping. Right. That was because my first, was like, like, why didn't you kill Taylor Kitsch? There's too many characters. Yeah, there are. So somebody had to go, and I was like, oh, okay, it's Colin Farrell. And then I was like, no, no. No. All right. Well, we will have to pick up this discussion next week when right. we talk about episode three. And uh, but see I do how think this, it's laying some out. intriguing groundwork now. The mask, the whole idea of who killers are, everybody's backstory is starting to hint at some really interesting dark stuff. I love Colin Farrell's backstory. Oh, I yeah, fucking yeah. love that. And, and that's like, I, I don't want that to get erased. As as uh, impressed was a as I was with that scene, I was also furious because they, they, they either, t- and now that I'm thinking about it your way, they either took away my favorite character from the show or they turned him into like the winter soldier in true detective. So, we'll see. or, or see, here's the other thing is movies do this too, is we could still be getting Colin Farrell, but just like in flashbacks. Yeah, I would I, I would be shocked to not see some flashbacks. Right. Yeah. But he's going to stay a main character, and more than likely because his head didn't blow up, he's going to be back. But anyway, I am liking where this is going, and I really do think that it's going to, every episode, go somewhere more and more pivotal, and more and more surprising. So. I... It, it's certainly going in that direction. The second episode I thought was markedly better than the first. Yeah. And um, hopefully it keeps this momentum going. Absolutely. So. Oh, and special, uh, real quick shout out. I think um, Justin Lin did a great job directing these two episodes. Yeah, it was very um, uh, reserved. It, I'm now it, happy that he's doing Star Trek. It, it felt like True Detective. It right. had that vibe. Mm. It did not have a Fast and the Furious vibe. No, not at all. So, uh you know, big ups to him. Yep. All right. So we will be back next week. Nate and Mike taking a look at True Detective episode three. What yes. do you think of it? You can uh, send us feedback through Twitter and Facebook mm-hmm. at Fright Flicks. Yes. Or Nate Flicks. That's Nate Flicks with an X. Fright Flicks with a CKS. Until next time.